All right, so uh, my name is Sarah Lazar. I am a researcher at Massachusetts General Hospital. And for the past about 20 years, I've been studying the impact of yoga and meditation on brain structure and function. So the first study we sort of did was uh, we took um, people who had been meditating for many years and we put them in the scanner and we compared them to people who had never meditated before. And we found that there were certain brain structures where they had more gray matter than controls. And uh, the areas that were larger were areas involved in sensory awareness, and um, uh, which was very consistent with what we know people do when they meditate. This is a form of meditation where you just pay attention to your senses. The first study though was criticized because uh, you know meditators often have different diets, they have different lifestyles, so maybe it has something to do with their, who these people were as opposed to their meditation practice. So the second study, what we did, was we took people who had never meditated before, and we put them through either an eight-week meditation program, or we just scanned them eight weeks apart. And we showed that, indeed, there were changes in brain structure after just eight weeks. All right, so this is the hippocampus, and it got bigger, as you can see. So here are the controls. Where are we go? Here are the controls, and here are the meditators. And, uh, um, and also, it's an area that's uh, negatively impacted by trauma, by PTSD. And so, uh, you know, people with trauma have a smaller hippocampus. Also, people with depression have smaller hippocampi. And it seems like, so it's helping reverse some of that. Um, we also found this area of the brain, which is called the temporal parietal junction. It's an area involved in creativity and empathy and compassion, because it's about being able to see things from multiple points of view, which is important both for empathy and for um, uh, creativity. And then we also found this, which was really interesting and the most relevant to here is the amygdala, which is the main um, part of the brain associated with emotion, in particular uh, uh, anger and, and fear, that it changed and the correlation correlated with stress. So the more stress reduction people reported, the smaller their amygdala became. So this really shows that when you meditate and people say, oh, it's making me feel less stressed, that's not just self-report, that's an actual biological reason why people are feeling less stressed. This is really well established, that the entire front half of the brain shrinks as we age, but in the meditators, it seems like it's preserved. That's remarkable. So when you say meditation, two minutes of meditation, an hour and a half of meditation, meditation once a month, I mean, is it, do you have a sense yet of whether it's committed activity or occasional activity? So uh, in our study, everyone was told to practice 40 minutes a day. On average, they practice 30 minutes a day, and it varied tremendously because some people practice a few minutes, some people practice, you know, the full 40 minutes, but not every day. You know, everything from zero to 40. Um, and so we and others have often found a correlation between the amount you practice and the changes in whatever symptoms they're looking at. Um, so it's sort of like exercising. The more you exercise, the more benefit you're going to get. Is it any kind of meditation, as long as you go into a relaxed internal state, or? Yeah. So most of the brain research has been done with various forms of Buddhist meditation. So Zen, or something called Vipassana, um, or you know, insight meditation, uh, or the Tibetan meditation, like what the Dalai Lama practices. And so, but other studies have looked at yoga, Tai Chi. There's been some studies with Tai Chi in the brain. Uh, a little bit with yoga, not as much. So it does seem like there can be different benefits, but sort of like um, running versus swimming versus weight-bearing exercises versus cardio, that they all have a general effect on general health, but then there's also specific effects depending on whether you're running or swimming, like which muscles are um, benefited. And so similarly with the different types of meditation, it may be that some are for this part of the brain and some are more that part of the brain. And, and do you have any sense yet of whether it persists? This is interesting, in other words, it tapers off or if you stop meditating, that's it. Probably it'll stop if it's sort of like you never forget how to ride a bike. But if you've ever tried, ever stopped riding a bike and then gone back to do it, you know you're a little rusty. And so similarly, people, you know, I have myself have gone through periods where I meditate less and really meditate more. That there's something that sort of persists, but there's other things that get a little rusty. So what next? What are you going to be studying uh, next? What's the next? Step? Right. So the big study we're doing right now is uh, because we have all these anti-aging effects. So we're recruiting actually people 65 to 80 who've never meditated before. And uh, we're <laughs> we're looking for subjects. <laughs> Would you like to learn to be in the study? Um, and then uh, we're, we're teaching them how to meditate, and then we're following them over two years, and hopefully we're going to get be able to keep following them for five or ten years. And sort of ask, answer that question, like you know, what happens if they keep practicing or if they don't. If they don't. Thank you. Thank you. Very much.